Blood supply of the structures of the knee. The important blood supply of the structures of the knee come from two sources. And I use this approach for simplification purposes and also in order to remember the blood supply around the knee. The first source is the popliteal artery itself. The second source is the anterior tibial artery. So let's talk about the anterior tibial artery. There is a branch of the anterior tibial artery called the recurrent anterior tibial artery, which is close to the tibial tubercle. So when you have a tibial tubercle fracture, this artery is injured and the patient may get compartment syndrome. So you need to monitor the patient for increasing pain, increasing analgesia requirement, and increased swelling for the development of compartment syndrome. So in this injury, you got to address the fracture of the tibial tubercle, and you got to address the patient for the development of compartment syndrome or not. There is another fracture of the proximal tibia, when the fracture goes through the entire proximal tibial physis, the patient is at risk of developing injury to the popliteal artery. Then we go to the second source of the blood supply of the knee, and that is the popliteal artery. The popliteal artery has five branches. The medial superior genicular artery, the lateral superior genicular artery, the medial inferior genicular artery, the lateral inferior genicular artery, and the middle genicular artery. And these are the type of questions that comes in the exam related to the blood supply. The peripheral part of the meniscus is vascular and if you repair it, it will heal. So a peripheral tear in the red zone will heal if it is repaired. So where did the blood supply of the meniscus come from? It comes from the medial and lateral inferior genicular arteries. And they supply approximately 20 to 30 percent of the periphery or the outer part of the meniscus with blood supply. This is the area where if you repair the meniscus, it will heal. Location of the tear is important. It is in the red zone. It will heal. I also seen the posterior horn of the meniscus is supplied by the middle genicular artery. But in general, the meniscus is supplied by the inferior genicular artery. Approximately 75% of the meniscus is avascular. The medial and lateral inferior genicular arteries also supply the infrapatellar fat pad and the patellar tendon. The patellar tendon may get some blood from the anterior tibial recurrent artery. The middle genicular artery give blood supply to the ACL and to the PCL. You got to remember that. ACL, PCL, middle genicular artery. Also, the middle genicular artery may supply the posterior horn of the meniscus. How about the medial and lateral superior genicular arteries? The medial and lateral superior genicular arteries supply the medial and lateral retinaculum. The lateral superior genicular artery is at risk of being injured during lateral retinacular release. 
It may be the only remaining blood supply to the patella after immediate parapatellar approach and fat pad excision. And some people think it may contribute to vascular necrosis and patellar fractures after tooth and knee replacement. Thank you very much. I hope that was helpful.